Good afternoon, Redeemer family, and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our psalm for this week. Our psalm for this week is Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verses 1 through 15. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all the mo the mo excuse me, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. I do not eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. You know, um, how many times are there things that we do or are able to do without really thinking about doing them. Uh, we kind of do them on automatic. Maybe it's something like brushing our teeth. Maybe it's something like tying our shoes. Maybe it's, it's something like putting on uh, clothing. We're just doing it without thinking. Our minds maybe are thinking something else while we're putting those things on or, or performing those tasks and not really thinking uh, through them. They're just kind of automatic. Well, sometimes people allow their worship of God to become that way because uh, they come into God's house and they know, you know the liturgies and they know the hymns and so they uh, kind of go through the motions just to show up and, and do it, but their minds really aren't on what they're doing. They're going through the motions, and it's an emptiness in God's house, an emptiness of their thoughts, an emptiness of their actions. You see, and I'm talking about that because that's what God's referring to here. We have a lot of people that go through empty ritual, just like some of the people in Israel were doing with their sacrifices. They weren't sincere. They just felt the obligation that it had to be done. And so they did it, and they did it without thinking, and they did it without sincerity. They did it without honoring God. And see, what God is after is a true sincerity and a, a, a deep sense of a relationship with God as we worship him. And that's what we're hearing. And I want you to think about this again, starting at verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills, and all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. See, God doesn't need the sacrifices. God doesn't need them you know, to carry on his life. He doesn't need them because 
he's lacking something or he doesn't need them because there's something missing so going through the motions isn't what God's after just doing it without thinking isn't what God's after in verse 14 Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God wants it to be true and sincere worship as we come into his house. Praising him and thanking him. Listen to 14, the last part of it again. You know, thanking him, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving performing your vows. We come into God's house, you know, it's prayer and praise and thanksgiving that we, we do, and that's what God is looking for, and he wants it to be true and sincere. He doesn't want it to be empty. He doesn't want it to be just go through the motions. He wants it to be real. Everything in the world belongs to him, including us. And he wants our thanksgiving for the things that he gives to us and our praise of him and our devotion to him to be real because his for us was real. In verse 15, we hear the words, and call upon me in the day of trouble. See, our day of trouble is the day of sin. The day we were born, we came into this world steeped in original sin and needing forgiveness and salvation. And every day since, we need that redemption from God, the love of God, forgiveness of God, the deliverance that only God can give. Jesus came into the world to give us that. Jesus came into the world to suffer and die, to deliver us from our sin and forgive us and give us life. That's what he did for us. Our need was great. And he delivered us in our day of trouble. He delivers us in every day of trouble. Whether we think so or not. Does he allow us pain at times? Yep. Does he allow us suffering at times? Yep. Does he allow us hardships at times? Yep. Does he allow us grief at times? Yes. But all of these things he has an intent to do what he needs to do in our lives to bring us and draw us into a right relationship with himself. Listen to the last part of verse 15. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. He has forgiven our sins. He has given us our physical life. He has given us eternal life all through Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. May we glorify him by being sincere and true and real in our worship of him. In his name, amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit, that our worship of you would be true and sincere and real that it wouldn't be empty ritual, that it wouldn't be empty words and mindless actions, but that would be true and sincere and uh, devoted to the one who gave his life for us, the one who loves and cares for us, the one who has delivered us and given us life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Monday, and may the Lord encourage you, strengthen you, and uplift you as he has delivered you. Have a great Monday.